But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. All right, hello everyone, and peace of the Lord to all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends. And let us see what we will talk about for today. Uh, I just came from YouTube just to, you know, to introduce people to Rumble to join us here. Uh, we were talking about the sentence of uh, the ex-Prime Minister of Pakistan, who is sentenced for 14 years in jail. <clears throat> uh, for what? <clears throat> For secret marriage. And, you know, we mentioned before we come here, <clears throat> uh, in the presentation I posted, if you watch it, that this is a country where drugs is a big business, prestitution, bachabazi, which is having sex with little boys. They dress boys as girls, as you know. You can search it, you know. They dress boys as girls and they made them dance for them and the sheikhs are giving money in the top of the butt of the boy. All of this is legal in Pakistan. But suddenly this country is a religious country. I mean, they are religious, we have to, we have to admit. They pray, they say the name of Allah every two seconds. <laughs> they say it even when they are having sex with the boys. They cannot live without the name of Allah. Yet, it is one of the most corrupt nation. And we showed you, according to Google, that Pakistan is top dog country in the world for searching for sex with horse, sex with animals, rape, pictures. <clears throat> to the point many, they are calling Pakistan as a pornistan. But just to be fair, it's not only Pakistan suffer from porn stan. All Islamic world is obsessed with sex. This is why in Islam, women, she need a guardian. You know, if, this, if those are religious, and uh, when you say, I am religious, what does that mean? Does that mean you are a Arabist? Does that mean if you see a woman alone, you will take advantage of her and rape her? Or if you see a woman alone, you will defend her if somebody tried to attack her? What religious mean? You notice that in Islamic words, women are a danger if they walk alone. They need a guardian. Why? Because Muslims, they cannot keep their penis inside their zippers when they see a woman, according to Muslims. That's why they need a guardian. Like, you see with her a male, then you will not jump on her. Otherwise, you tell me why. <clears throat> why the women need a guardian? God help from who? If you watch the video of the, this guy, any video, 
you will see he will not speak one word without starting by saying Allahu Akbar, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And he prays Muhammad and the family of Muhammad and Allah. He say Allah every two minutes. He keep talking about Islam and uh, Prophet Muhammad and you know, he's so decent. Again, then you open his wallet, you will find that he stole millions and millions. He, even his marriage is a scam. He is corrupt to the bone. But is that only him? All of them are the same. All those who they are claimed to be religious. Omran Khan, he, brother, sisters, he, he, he have messages to motivate Muslim youth. Oh, I mean, imagine you are a Muslim, Muslim youth and you receive your guidance from Andrew Tates. This is the Andrew Tates of Pakistan. Yeah. वो कोई मिथोलॉजी नहीं है 623 को क्या था हिजरत हुई yeah, yeah. उसके बाद क्या 625 को जंग बदर हुई oh, exactly. 636 को रोमन्स the romans Roman... the roman empire you know the prophet he destroyed the roman empire we should destroy more empire byzantine yeah. so you see do you see do you see even when they make a speech they make a speech about what the the title of the video is motivating muslim youth he's talking about what talking about killing the Christians <laughs> I mean I don't know what is inside the video I don't speak the Urdu language uh, you know but I don't I don't know the language so I just click at you know it says uh, 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 Imran Khan you know exclusive motivational message to Muslim youth. is that how you motivate Muslim youth Muhammad he said attack the Roma so we can get the blondie girls do you see how filthy, corrupt, evil they are? Like, you cannot motivate Muslims without calling about talking about killing and attacking other nations, and the Christians specifically. How we can motivate Muslims? What motivation do Muslims have to do with the Roman Empire? <laughs> See? So this is the same guy who speak about Islam, preaching Islam, we want to kill the Christian, we want to rape their women, let us take the blonde the girls. And this is the motivation, it's about money. You will notice even their motivation of doing something is about sex and money. Like what is the motivation of Muhammad to attack the Roman? He said, attack the Roman, you get the blonde the girls. And actually, I don't speak the language, but I noticed there's a lot of Arabic words in the language. Like he said, tarikh, which means history. You know, like they, they look like even they don't even have a language. Look like that even even the Islamization of the Arab made them they cannot even live without our, our, our language. And underneath here. There is messages or comment. Let us see the comment. This is the leader. May Allah protect Amran Khan. Yeah, he's a leader. <laughs> a well-educated leader, a cricket boy, a corrupt, sex under the table. But for the Muslims, May Allah, he isn't very educated because he, he heard about the Roman. He just told you he killed the Roman. So he's educated. Uh. <laughs> Salute your courage, Amran Khan. I mean, he was so brave when he married this woman secretly. 
You see, when somebody marry a woman secretly, that means he is a big potato coward. To the point, he don't dare to marry her in public. Is that correct? Only coward men, they don't dare to announce their marriage. If this is a marriage, why you don't want to, if this is not a, a, a fornication, why you want to have secret marriage? Because you are a coward. Because you are doing a business. So you marry other women and you want to be just the, the husband of that woman in public because this woman will support your, your, your political agenda. And you know, you ask the Muslim, why Muhammad marry many women? What they will say to you? They will say to you because he want to spread Islam for political reason. So you will notice here that this is a trend in Islam. It's a it's a normal thing. The Prophet himself, according to Muslim, he did not marry women for sex. He married them so he can use them. For sure, we can agree with that. Like Muhammad, he married Khadija. She is way older than him in the age of his mother. That's just because she is. A rich woman but Muhammad for sex he chose uh, you know uh, Sophia he killed her family he killed her husband he killed he killed her tribe and he raped the women or Bani Mustalik or Aisha those are for sex or Mary the Copt but there is women Muhammad he married them just for his agenda so you cannot marry a Muslim for love a Muslim, he will not marry you for love. Proven by history, proven by the religion. They marry you for the sake of agenda or sex. No love. Yeah, well, if I say it, Pakistan, actually, you know what? In Arabic, we don't have P. So, so when they say, when we say in Arabic, we say Pakistan, because simply we don't have P. P as a letter, we don't have it in Arabic. There's no such a letter, you know. Uh, so this guy is the one who want to teach you about Islam. America, who are you? Look, the prime minister of uh, 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 like Pakistan, he is teaching America. Like America, who are you? Who are you, America? You are nobody, America. Let's see what this video is about. Give me a second. To be sure there's no commercial. Huh. Oh, as usual, there's a commercial always. All right. I don't have the YouTube without commercial. Huh. This guy, in public, he speak against America. But I assure you, the first thing he will do after he go from jail, he will go and seek asylum in America. Who want to bet? Who want to bet? Jitta mujhe izzati. Jitta unhone mujhe vaha. Wahaba, yeah. Just America, America, you know, do you know that those people, they are begging for the help of America for bread? Do you know that Pakistan is flooded every year and they are out of food and they keep begging America for support? And now he said, America, who are you? Look, how come you did not say that when you are in the office? How come when you were in the office, you were kissing their ass? May Allah ask you. Now, America, who are you? They go in the street, they shout death to America, and then those stupid American, by the way, I don't blame those Pakistani Muslims, those terrorists, to do what they do. But the funny is that the stupid American, they keep giving them money. If you search right now, let us do this. American AIDS to Pakistan. Huh. Let us see. Sixty years of AIDS. <laughs> how many? <laughs> how hello, how many? How many? Hold on. <laughs> what what? Sixty years. They are bankrupt. The government cannot maintain 
even the price of food they cannot afford to pay for food for 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 bread and then they go and make speeches this is after he lost the office about America when he's in the office he is the puppy of America this will remind me with the Iraqi Shia you know the Iraqi Shia are more than 70 leaders including those who they are supporting Iran right now and they are working for Iran they came the stupid American they gave them visas and they come and they met with George Bush the donkey to convince him to invade Iraq and now the same people they are asking America to leave the same people who beg on America and they kiss the ass of every American please please come and save us from Dom Saddam Hussein he is a criminal he is disgusting and then after the American went there and they kicked Saddam Hussein for them and everything is done for them now leave we don't want you here you are a kafir this is the truth about Islamic words hypocrite and loyal they have no friends they betray you and they betray each other those are people who killed the grandsons of Muhammad do you know that every citizen of Pakistan the Sunni they support the one who killed the grandsons of Muhammad they support Aisha and Omar and Abu Bakr against Ali and his children I have my Skype open and we want to discuss when the Muslim they say legal marriage I want to know what is marriage in Islam do you even Muslims have legal marriage oh somebody saying to me uh, no no Amran Khan was sentenced for seven years uh, for uh, no, his wife seven years he is 40 14 years yeah yeah it says here in the news in front of you <clears throat> his wife she sentenced for seven years so his wife Bushra Bibi also has uh, has also also been found guilty and sentenced to 14 years in prison ah, both of them I thought uh, she is seven years uh, and he is 14 here it says both are 14 and then additionally Omran Khan has been fined KPR 787 million uh, 2.9 million dollars his existing five years ban from seeking political office uh, earlier this month okay well hold on you know I mean this is all is garbage anyway we know that those countries have no justice and all, all what they do is just uh, you know they, they they dig a hole for each other all right there's no justice who can trust who can trust what it's called justice in Pakistan this guy he might be a prime minister again in a few years just wait and then he will put in in in, in jail all those who put him in jail today and he will accuse him with the same thing he will accuse them with fake marriage uh, you know he can dig after them all of them they all of them they are corrupt but anyway you know I feel jealous that he have a, such a beautiful woman like this I'm not sure if she is a female do we have any Muslim from Pakistan or from any Muslim country can call us and tell us what is marriage in Islam what is marriage in Islam why you Muslim call it nikah as I know, nikah means the F word. It doesn't mean marriage. Since when nikah mean marriage? And why you Muslims have secret marriage? How marriage can be secret unless it is a shame? You see, people do in secret only what is a shame to do in public do we agree is that correct 
So why Muslim they have secret marriage if this is marriage? Marriage cannot be marriage if it is secretly done. If we search right now for secret marriage video, Lady Dawa. Without even typing uh, Lady Dawa, right away the video of Lady Dawa, peace be upon her, will come. Ah, I found a video of Mufti Mink. Oh, that's interesting. Brother? Mufti Mink, he have a video about secret marriage, brother? Ah. Let us learn about uh, secret marriages. Mm. Is that a video without uh, talking? And there are lots of sisters who also are in the same situation. They don't have family here, nor do they have close friends. And we're talking about Nikah here. Can we throw a light on uh, this secret marriage? Can we have Nikah where it's only me and her and no one else? Because this is might be based on personal question. Thank you very much. My brother, Jazak. My brother, listen, brother, he is very religious. He want to F a woman, excuse my language. Only me and her, none of your business. This is Islam, brother. And this is a question in public now. Can I F a woman privately, me and her, and she is my wife now? Hmm? My, my heart goes out to those who are perhaps from abroad, they're here alone and they don't know perhaps people are not ready to marry them they don't know much about them etc it really is difficult but the question about secret marriages i need to tell you that before i get to that someone had asked me a question we were talking about it earlier backstage that young people it's becoming very common they say we did our nikah and you ask them <laughs> Well, how was it done? They say, well, he put a mahar in front of me and he asked me if I would be his wife and I said, yes, I would. <laughs> I said, and who was the witness? So the answer is the greatest witness of them all. I say, who is that? He says, Allah. Qul kafa billahi bayni wa baynakum shahida. Isn't Allah sufficient as a witness between you and I? Right. So Allah was the witness and Allah witnessed it. Okay, don't let the devil make you think that that's a nikah. No. That's actually invalid. Oof. There is no way in the Quran or the Sunnah that a marriage can be officiated without proper human being witnesses. Listen, it needs to be just to show you the hypocrisy of the Muhammadan. Who was the witness of the marriage of Muhammad to Zainab? Any Muslim can tell me? Muhammad, he said, my witness is Allah. <laughs> you see the hypocrisy? It's okay for Muhammad to have so-called nikah without witnesses. So how Muhammad married this woman? How this is a woman? Do we have witnesses? And if you have witnesses, how that is a secret marriage? Let us go to the front idiot. Secret marriage. Ah, this idiot here. This is a different idiot. <clears throat> All right.
This is Shabir Hari, who ran away from me. Pleasure to be on. There's an, an article in The New Yorker quoting a Muslim chap chaplain, Adil Zeb, uh, from L.A. Or, or in and around L.A., where he talks about the practice of secret marriage. So he's approached by many young people going to, co to college, and they want him to conduct a marriage for them, but they don't want to publicize this marriage. So there's been a whole bunch of discussion on his Facebook page, and, and the article highlights some of that, you know, about whether this is permissible or not, and you know, what are the, what are the sexual ethics, all those sorts of things. Um, that came, is, it, is it wiser to accept the secret marriage or is it wiser to just say, no, we're not, I'm not going to conduct these secret marriages? So Dr. Shabir, you had a chance to look at the article. What are your thoughts? Yeah, so it, it seems to me that the background of this, I mean, what leads to this need for the secret marriage, uh, if we call it such for the time being, um, is that uh, as the article points out, uh, some surveys show that uh, about 75% of the college students are sexually active. <laughs> Um, well, 50% of Muslims, according to a report. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's uh, more alarming because I was... Only 50% of Muslims are sexually active. What happened to the rest of the 50? They cut their penis? What, what? I mean, where, where did they get those, those numbers? 50, 60, 30, active? What does that mean? Look like the majority of Muslims, they cut their penises. They don't have a penis no more. They drop it. Like, don't, you, don't use it, you lose it. How this female, she got the answer, she is the daughter of Shabir Ali, that 50% of Muslims are sexually active. <laughs> you know what sexually active means, what they are talking about? They are having sex already. And then Shabir Ali, he said, this is alarming. So 50% of the Muslims are doing fornication. That's what they are saying. Sexually active, and those are not married. So what they are talking about is how many fornicators the percentage between Muslims. Continue. Of this, I mean, what leads to this need for the secret marriage, uh, if we call it such for the time being, um, is that uh, as the article points out, uh, some surveys show that uh, about 75% of the college students are sexually active. Um, well, 50% of Muslims, according to a report. Oh, yeah. okay. So that's uh, more alarming because I was going to say I, I would hope that the Muslims are in the 25%. Okay, you know. <laughs> yeah. All right. We, um, have, we have a caller. Hello? So if, if that is the case, then the question is like... Hello? Hello? Hey, oh. Sammy, can you hear me? Hey, how are you? Just a second here. Yeah, can you hear me? I hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yes, this is Maris uh, again. If you remember, we had a talk. A few I, rem days ago. I remember you. All right. Yeah, yeah. we had a talk a few days ago. Like, all right. Well, we, what and, we... uh, yeah, I was wondering if we could just continue with our conversation. <laughs> yeah, we will continue, and... but you know, I have a little off topic now. I want to finish it first. What do you think about the secret marriage in Islam? As long as you are a Muslim. You know, I've been following your um, life in the Rumble. Uh -huh. All I can say from my personal, that it's, um, uh, you know, the people I know in my, what you say, like people in my near, uh, we don't follow like this stuff. You see, like there are lots of stuff which I consider is not good. And it is, it's not because of the Islam, it's like my morals. So personally, I don't find it. Uh, but uh, so you are saying your moral is uh, is good and Islam moral is bad? I don't know about this secret marriage. Like, is it uh, referring to muta or I don't know? Like, is it something? No, no, muta is, muta is different. Muta is not secret. You do it. You go to a woman. You ask her to have sex with you, in exchange of certain amount of money for a certain amount of time, and when the time is up, there is no need for divorce the so-called marriage is over. It's like, uh, you know, uh, you go to a pimp house, you pay a uh, certain money, they tell you you have 30 minutes, 30 minutes is up, you just put your pant on and go out. No, as I condone, 
but, uh, but I, what I was wondering about the secret message, I don't know if it's anything I've heard about, or it's this referring to Quran. Secret, mar was... secret marriage uh, is, uh, uh, you know, in Islam there is all kind of marriage. There is a wage of friend. There, those are not really marriage. It's a form of prostitution. And actually even Muslim marriage is a prostitution. Like when a Muslim man, he marry a woman, do he marry her for life or he marry her temporarily? Married for a life? No, no, because as long as you can divorce her by one statement, this is temporary. It's a contract. Actually, even you Muslim call it contract. Is that correct? You know, that's the thing I'm trying to tell you. Uh, it's depending on who you ask, because uh, as I've grown up... No, no, I'm not uh, talking my... about you. No, no, don't take okay. me wrong. I'm not talking about you, about me. I'm talking about Islam. No, that's what I'm telling you. I mean, the, the type of Islam I have been uh, learned that I'm telling you, because... Uh, what I have been like teach, uh, especially if you take about this marriage, it had to be witnessed by two peoples or more. Otherwise, it's not valid. So who, was, not who valid. was the who was the witness of Adam and Eve? Uh, I, I perhaps maybe God and angels. Okay, who was the witness of Zainab and Muhammad? You know, Nobody. Back to the yeah, you understand what I'm trying to say. So you see, the witness, first of all, the witness doesn't doesn't change anything if you witness it or not. Uh, uh, you know, if, if it's a marriage or not marriage. But obviously in Islam there is no marriage because simply it's a contract. One person, he have the right to finish the contract anytime. And that is the employer. The employee cannot fire the employer, correct? But what I'm trying to tell you is... No, no, no. Uh, you know, I, I want to focus with me. Can the employee fire the employer or the employer can fire the employee? Can the employer fire yeah. the employee? Okay. okay, who is who is the one who fire? The employer or the employee? Can I... If I am an emplo emplo employee in you, can you fire me? No, it's the boss. Okay, so the in boss. Islam, the man only can fire the women which means the woman, she is not part as a partner. She is just a contractor. She is an employee. When you are a partner, I cannot fire you because we are equal in what we do. But in Islam, the man, he can fire the women by one statement. He say divorce, she is divorced. So simply, in Islam, the, the, the word marriage does not exist. Secondly, the word nikah means the effort. Yes, but that's not my understanding. And uh, if you like, more ask most the common people, they wouldn't uh, talk in the same way what you're thinking. That's what I'm trying to well, say. Well, they can say whatever they want. Who cares about what they... Uh, you see, your understanding, it doesn't count because it's not my understanding, it's not your understanding, it is what it is. Right? If I understand that a cloud is rocks, doesn't mean a cloud is rocks. Correct? Yes. So there's a huge difference between my understanding and what it is. So if, if, if some Muslim, he think this is not what Islam is about, well, he have to prove me wrong. And then he will have a better understanding then. And I will be the one who think that the cloud is rocks. But if I am the one who can prove that my understanding is what Islam is about, then your understanding doesn't count because my understanding fit perfectly with what Islam is about. If you can show me the reference about uh, what you try to say about this contract, it's from the one, if we talk about, uh, if you can get divorced, it's from the one side. Can you show me the reference? You know, okay. Uh, I, I am surprised that you are saying to me you need reference. Aren't you a Muslim? Yes, yes, and that's what I'm telling. Uh, what I have learned, uh, it has to be two witnesses, and when it's just come to the divorce, like it's not personally with me, but what I've heard, it's both ways. A woman can divorce you if she is unhappy, because no. I remember... No, a woman, she can ask for divorce, and that uh, uh, if the husband, he uh, accept, he she can ask him, divorce me, but she can divorce him. And then the man, he might be put condition, like there's something called al-khula. Al-khula is like, uh, I don't know what the, what the word in, in English, uh, <clears throat> like the break. So 
she can ask for that and if he agree then she have to give him all the money he's spent on her so what men usually do they start beating the women making her life like hell until she asks for that so he can get all the money he spent on her otherwise he will never divorce her until it's up to him if he don't care for money he just divorce her if you want her to get him all the money back he keep her as a wife he never divorce her and he will beat her every day you can just show me the reference it's also like well you know the Quran chapter 4 verse number 34 it says الرِّجَالُ قَوَامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ men are in charge of, of, of women and they are better than women so uh, uh, if you go in the Quran let me open the verse for you what? tell me again verse 4 434 yeah <clears throat> yeah this is like uh, men are the caretakers of women it's not talking about like no this is talking about everything divorce. no no it's talking about even you can beat them uh, why the man he can beat his wife he can beat his wife so you are in charge of her totally like when the Quran speak about divorce the Quran speak about talking to men divorcing women not to women divorcing men yes but I as a I remember days hadith you can help me if I'm wrong about the woman if she is not uh, sexually a pleasure by her husband she can divorce her uh, she have you to know, she know, have to she prove has, she no no something. she have to prove that he cannot have sex not only he don't pleasure her so he cannot have sex so then she can ask because the 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 uh, the purpose of this marriage in Islam is sex so if the man he cannot perform his part as a man then the marriage will be dissolved but this is a different story but if you go in the Quran chapter 2 verse number 230 chapter 2 verse number 31 chapter 2 verse number 32 all of them talking about men divorcing women divorcing women divorcing women so not women divorcing men you will not find one verse in the Quran saying, women, you can divorce your husband. You will see always saying, divorce if he divorce her. If he divorce her. Now, this is a chapter 2, verse number 230. And here actually you, you find very funny rule that if a man, he divorce his wife three times, she cannot go back to her husband, the one who just divorced her, until she, if a new husband, not to marry a new husband until she if. No, I have I have followed this uh, when you had this talk for a few days ago uh -huh. with uh, some other men. I have following this. <clears throat> you know that's I'm telling you, trying to explain you. Uh, okay, it can be written in the Quran, but me personally or like we don't follow these rules. So you see, in that case, I will do like what I find it. It's not contradicted with my morals or like my living, uh, how we live. So that's the simple, you know, that's uh, like... We can say, you see, you, you see, uh, Bohis, you, you are... Uh, is your name Bahis or Bohis? Uh, Bahis. Bahis, okay. Yes. So uh, you, you, can, you can give me a speech about your morality. I can give you a speech about my morality. But this is not what the topic is. The topic is what Islam is about. Like here, as we see, what kind of God he say? If a man, he divorced his wife, she cannot go back to him unless she, if not marry, the other husband. You see? And this is the proof, by the way, this is one of the proofs that the word uh, nikah does not mean marriage. It means to if. Like here it says, until she sleep with other husband. Not until she marry other husband. He's a husband. Look, look, look at the first translation until she has married another husband how how married another husband he's a husband so the word tenka until she if the new husband which means she marry him and she sleep with him so in islam if a woman she marry a husband the second husband and she did not have sex with the second husband she is not she did not do nikah yet she just married. This is why the verse saying, until she, if a new husband. Now look at the translation, very funny. 
until she has married another husband? <laughs> if you if you go, let, let me show you how they lie. If you, I don't know if you know the story of. Uh, no, of I, I know the story. I've been, I, know, I have heard this debate last time when you heard it. You know, yeah, about the the woman who her husband did beat uh, beat her, right? Yes. Uh, until he made her clothes in uh, like uh, greener than her clothes, right. her skin. Yes. Uh, what what Muhammad said? You should know that you cannot go back to your previous husband unless your husband do nikah to you <laughs> until he he tastes your juice so she is she now she have a husband so she can't go back she have to be literally effed by the new husband and the muslim they 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 false translate they say until he had sexual intercourse the fact doesn't say that the fact it says until he tastes your orgasm and you taste his orgasm until you taste his orgasm. So now she is married. Can she go back to the previous husband? No. Why? Because he did not taste her orgasm. And she did not taste his orgasm. So what is the purpose of this marriage? What is exactly why this woman she married from the second husband? She married from the second husband. So she can go back to the previous husband. How that can be a marriage? So Islam is just a game. It's like, you know, uh, uh, sometimes because the law is so stupid, so you play games with the law. Like, you know, I go to the traffic light, and the traffic light now is red. And next to me, there is an entrance to a Gaza station. So I go in the Gaza station, I go out from the other exit, I take the road, and I continue to go straight. So I avoid the traffic light. So this is what the Muslims are doing. So now, a Muslim woman, and this is coming from God. I will come back to this because uh, regarding the hadiths, I will come to back when I have my proper uh, topic. Just a quick uh, answer on what you're talking about. As I told you, I'm not so into uh, in details. Uh, that's the first thing because usually, as you know, you are a scholar by yourself, uh, as have you told. The thing is, when this, this type of topics, you need to understand everything the history you need to know the context you need to know uh, so that's not but even even this one we need also. contact and history it says it's this is for today the muslim today they practice without knowing any history this is what is muhammad saying this is very simple what history a man he married, divorced his wife three times abu rifa he married her you know rifa he married her and uh, you know she don't want to sleep with the man Obviously, why? Because she don't want him. She married him, hoping he would divorce her, because she refused to sleep with him, and she would go back to the previous husband. What history? This is your history. Do you have more details? No, that's the history. But that I'm telling you, uh, you don't know the context. You don't know like. No, we know the context. You know, it's very well explained. We have you know, this. Is, this is why the books of Hadith is exist to tell us all the context. We 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 have what he said, what she said, what he told her, what he did, how he did beat her. We have all details. What is missing? No, the missing. It's uh, my understanding of this. What I can say, if I, for my morally, I wouldn't do it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, but isn't it the Quran? Isn't it the Quran says if a man divorces his wife three times, she cannot get back to him unless it is three times. Did the Quran yes. give more details? That's it. So supposedly the Quran is enough to give you that. This is the command of Allah. That's it. So there is no more more learning note for history. If you divorce your wife three times, she can't get back to you unless she have sex with a new guy. Why? What is the logic? I, I couldn't answer. That's it. That's what I'm no, I will tell you. I will tell you what Muslims say to me. They say to okay. me, Allah is punishing the husband. But look how stupid this punishment is. The husband, if he cared, he would have divorced her anyway. It is the women now. She have going to sleep with someone else, in order to go back to her babies. The weak spot for the women is the babies. So this woman, obviously, she don't care for the husband. She is desperate to go back to her kids. So now she had to go and find a new guy and she hate him and obviously he's beating her and he's way older than her in order just to get back to the previous husband. That's the whole story. So look how much suffering the women she have. And look, even Aisha, she said, I, I did not find any women suffering as a believing woman. Who said that? Aisha.
She did, she say, I did not see a suffering woman as much as a believing woman. Why Aisha she said that? Because this is what happened. Muslim women, they are suffering because Islam took all their rights from them. Look, she said, look, her skin is greener than her clothes. Look, I did not see a woman, suffering women as much as a believing woman. I have not seen any women suffering as much as believing women. So Aisha, she is witnessing that Muslim women are the most to suffer between all women in the world. Why? Because simply Islam treat them as animals, sex object. She's a goat. She have a vagina. She make babies and keep, she, she make milk. That's it. She is not a partner in a marriage. She is not a wife. She is one of many sexual objects. I can learn this, for example, yes, I can learn this, and I don't know uh, other Muslims who follow this. That's what I'm try trying to tell you. The Practically, it's different from the how it's in the books, and that's what I'm trying to do. The way we have been teach about Islam, not just me, it can be many people's. In, that's, so how would you explain that to me then? Uh, why are we not following this? Because uh, you just told me you have a good moral. Because obviously, because you don't follow it, <laughs> you know. If you follow Islam, you don't, you, you know. Then you you don't have a good moral. If you follow Muhammad, then you go to your uh, to your uh, you know wife uh, to, to your to your son house and you flirt with the wife. That's what Muhammad did. This is the best man of Muslims. So because you are coming from a good family, your parents are good people. So you refuse to practice such a thing, but not because Islam is good. But because you are a person of good equality, you don't want to follow such a thing. But what does this have to do with Islam? You know, you refusing because you find that you, you know, with, with Islam, without Islam is way better than you following Islam. So you refuse to follow Islam. That's why you are saying to me, I don't do that because simply you are not following Islam. If you follow Islam, you would do that. I can have a quick, okay, we can just discuss about it. Uh, you know, as with the religion, uh, I had a quick uh, talk with a friend. You know, before times, when there were prophets, it was it was like easily to, if you see a prophet in front of you and you follow. You know, these days, when it's come to the religion, uh, we have many religions, for example. And then in that case, you never know which one of this is right. Who is the one who told you this, this logic? Give me his name. No, it's not logic. We are talking. I'm talking. No, no, no. You see, this is this is false logic, isn't it? The Quran says that the Jews they killed many prophets, and they gave oh, many no. miracles. So no, either this point. is true or not, no, huh? No, you didn't get my point. What I'm trying to tell you today, nobody can say with sure, which, uh, like his religion is. No, no, no. We can, we can. Nothing happened. changed. Nothing changed. This is not a this is not a logic because at the old days there was millions of gods too. There's many religions and there's many philosophers. In fact, in all these people, they used to think better than now. Today, you have somebody, you know, they go free Palestine, but they don't even know where Palestine is. Before they don't open their mouth, before they knew what they are talking about. In the time of my grandfather and grandmother, people, they were more educated than the stupid generation we have now. They don't even know, two X two is what? Most of people don't have high school. So we are now in the time we have computers, we have a smart watch, we have a smart uh, uh, phones, we have uh, everything, so we have AI, yet like machines get smart, people get stupid. So in the old days, if you compare between people at that time, even though they have too much superstitions and all kinds of crazy stuff, but they were way more educated. At least they have common sense. They knew what is a male, what is a female. So today, more people are more stupid. It's not about there is more uh, religion. No, no, this is not the same. But there is, they are more stupid. There is people who follow without questioning, without seeking, without uh, checking facts. And this is our problem. It's about facts, facts check. So if I say to you, the moon is in my bedroom, and you believe me, is it my fault? No, it's your fault because you believe that the moon suddenly become in my bedroom. So if I have a follower and he is a stupid and he follow me blindly, that is not my fault. It is his fault. And always there is somebody who will take advantage of the fool. So foolishness is always exists. Nothing changed.
but uh, foolishness it changed the color. Like now they call them uh, call themselves uh, socialist, they call themselves communist, and they claim that they are the most smart people and they are the one who defend the human right. But at the same time they do abortion. In the same time they support killing anyone who is against them. In the same time they speak of democracy but they burn churches. They are the same as Taliban. So what happened? Nothing changed except a human being getting more worse. Not at that time, it was the opposite. In fact, according to Muslims, there was 365 idols around the Kaaba. Is that correct? I haven't heard about it. But so, see, but, so see, uh, but listen to me. Let me, let me finish. Uh, okay. 365 idols mean 365 religion. In a place is a small of them by backyard. And people don't kill each other. Can you bring 365 religion in one yard without people killing each other these days? So Arab, before Islam, they were more tolerant, way better from when Islam came. Islam came when I kill everybody. Before Islam, 365 religion. They practice everyone. He have his God next to the other one, God, and nobody kill anybody. What happened? Because Islam is evil. Islam is a gang. Don't allow other weeds. You know, there's weeds when I take over other weeds. All of them are weeds. But there is peaceful weed. And there is invasive weeds. And Islam is invasive by violence and hatred. Go ahead. Maybe just a quick question, yes. <clears throat> You know, how many people do you think like follow this religion in details? What I'm trying to say, uh, why not just take the good from religion? Uh, instead of, like, what is the good of Islam? You have like, you have the praying, for example. Like what? No, praying, uh, how we pray like. Pray, uh, you know, pray is a good thing. Why not? You think it's What is the good thing pray? about it? What is it? You are praying for my death. Don't you recite the Fatiha five times a day? No, you see, no, 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 hold on. Go, you see, let us go, go to your go, prayer. Go, no, no, go, no, no, go, no, go. no, 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 hold on. When you pray, you don't pray to God, you pray to curse me. Five times a day, you say, Oh Allah, make don't make us like the lost ones or the cursed ones. The lost one is the Christian, the cursed one is the Jews. So you cannot even pray to your God without cursing the Jews and hating the Christians. How that can be a prayer of God, how that can be a good thing. Imagine I go to my closet, I want to pray now to my God. I say, may, may my God kill Bahis. What the heck? Oh God, don't make me like him. Oh, that can be a prayer. So when you say a prayer is a good thing, then we find that your prayer is nothing but cursing and bully. The, 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 the prayer of a Muslim is nothing but a bully. You are bullying me. You claim that you are better. You are fascist. You are Nazi. You think you are the best of mankind. And you pray, oh, please, Allah, don't make me like those people. Can't you pray to your God to make you a good person without speaking about me? No, you cannot, because Islam is religion of a bully. So when you say to me, like, we, there is good things in religion, you say to what? Like praying, but you don't pray to God. You are bullying people. Imagine there is somebody, look, hold on. Imagine there is somebody, he don't, he don't look good. He don't look good. And then I say to God, please, God, don't make me look like him. And you hear me every day. You hear me saying that every day. This is how it feels for me as a Christian. Supposedly, I'm the one who don't look good for you. And you pray to your God, say, please, God, don't make me look like Christian prince, please. He's so ugly, disgusting, please don't. How that can be a prayer. This is a bully. That's how you see it. You see, that's one. No, no, this is how it is. This is how it is. You see, look what you just said. Look, look what you just did now. You just said, This is how you see it. So you are insulting me, and yet you are accusing me that I'm wrong. Let me explain how I mean. You said this type of question is something that you can answer with yes or no. You have to understand what I'm trying to mean. And what I'm trying to say is when we pray, we feel connected to the God because as you are more connected, you will be on the right way because I can speak from my personal experience. I pray five times a day. It doesn't matter. You know, I, I live in a European country, but I, I can manage to make my praying, and that's what keeping me out of the sin. 
what because sin? What sin? You are you are living sin. First, you are praying to wrong God. Secondly, you are bullying me, and yet you are saying this is not sin. Isn't it bully is a sin? Isn't it? Isn't it? You know, if second, when you say I'm praying, oh, do you make a prayer? You no. You are reporting. You're repeating what the Quran said. Prayer is a connection between you and the one you are praying to, supposed your God. But who you Muslims, when you pray, you don't pray. You are repeating what Allah said. So is Allah praying or you? Obviously it's Allah because you are not saying your own words. You are saying what Allah said. You don't even know what they are saying because it's in Arabic. You can't, you are not even allowed to pray in your, in your language. You have to pray in my language because you are a slave of the Arab. So you can pray in Muslim. No, you, you cannot. No, you cannot. Before, no prayer before, is accepted. No prayer is accepted except in Arabic. Let me explain it because before, you, when you, you know the, when you pray, it's as a not being able to speak Arabic. It's a small verses which you learn by your heart, and of course you will learn the, also the meaning. But if someone, for example, this is someone new who could not pray, he can pray in his language until he learned the Arabic words. You see, you see look Arabic. what you just did. You just approve Islam to be racist, zero ethic. You you can pray in your language until you learn how to pray in Arabic. What does that mean? Why until why I cannot pray in my language? You see, this is why Islam is made for the Arab. It's a racist cult to hijack every culture. Then you change your name, you change your clothes, you change your food, you change your habit, and then you became an Arab. That the whole idea of Islam it's about Arabization. You are a slave of the Arab is to destroy your her heritage. Like, isn't it? Can you as a Muslim be proud about your heritage before Islam? Can you like tell me what you're trying to mean? Uh, in what way? Can you be proud? Let us say, originally you are from India, which means originally you are Hindu. Hmm. Can you be proud about the Hindu culture, or let us say accomplishment? A Hindu philosopher, as an example, you say you have a grand grandfather. He was a Hindu philosopher. Can you be proud about him? If I'm a Hindu, you mean? In the no, no, if you are, you are a Muslim now. Muslim. But originally you, you know, your grand grandfather was a Hindu. Okay. Right. And he was a philosopher. Or he was uh, something, uh, you know, a good guy. Can you be proud about him? Well, I don't have the reason to be not proud about. Well, your but... prophet said the one who is proud about his inheritance before Islam, tell him to go and buy the penis of his father. Can you believe it? Just a second. So we can just take it with the Hayat, you know. Uh, my understanding of the Hadith is if it's contradict with Quran or like. What my... contradict? Uh, this is, does not contradict. Now you are trying no, to no, 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 no. I'm just telling you, for example, like if you're going to show me a, a Hadith, if it's uh -huh. something we cannot find in the Quran, that's what I'm trying to say. If it's something not in the Quran, uh, name like. If, if they have a mention about it. Well, everything, oh. is in the, in, in, everything is not in the Quran. What do you mean? So you now suddenly you, you know, you, uh, you Muslim, you follow only what is in the Quran? No, no, I follow the Quran and I follow the Hadith. Okay. Which, uh, if it's not contradict or if it's something. My uh, friend, you, you have a wrong understanding because you can, you and you must follow hadith which is contradict the Quran because there's many hadith is made specifically to abrogate the Quran. Don't you know that? They are made specifically for a purpose of abrogating the Quran. Like as an example, the muta. There's yes. no there's no verse in the Quran says don't do muta no more. But there's hadith says don't do muta no more. I don't know what happened to this website. It's not opening no more. <laughs> but then it's good. You see what I'm trying to say. Okay, hadith, it's telling us something good. But if, if the hadith contradicts, it's telling us to do something morally wrong. I wouldn't My friend, your prophet never told you something morally right. Okay, give me one thing your prophet told you morally right. I don't read hadith. I tell you, I don't read So how you, how you, but a second ago, you told me, told you morally right. And the second I asked you, give me one, you said you do not know what happened. No, I will give you the example. No, no. My example is, you say regarding Muta. I told you, if it's in the Hadith, it's say something good. So that in that case, I will follow it. 
Uh, so, uh, so, so, so uh, what you are doing now, uh, you you be you become a person who filter what your prophet said, and uh, you decide what is good for you, what is not, and that that's how it work for you. But this is not how religion work. Either you follow your prophet, as he said, as he told you, or you don't. You can say, I want to follow this, I want to refuse that. If you do this, then you have new religion. You, I don't know what the name of it. Do you have a new name for this religion? The one it's called, I follow as I wish? Can a Christian follow as he wish? Of what Jesus say? How come we Christian, we don't say, I don't accept what Jesus said here? Why? Why we don't have Da'if Jesus? You Muslim, you have Da'if Muhammad. What is the reason? I will tell you. Because Muslim, they try to find an excuse, an exit of all the shameful things Muhammad, he said and he did. So what they do? They say, I don't accept this. I don't accept that. I reject this. I, I like that. So if something is an embarrassment, you say, I don't accept it. If it's something that sounds good for you, uh, you, you publish it. You make noise about it. But don't you think this is a form of democracy? I would rather uh, call it, that's how we are living today. That's what I'm telling you. Today, it's not so simple to know what is the truth because there are so many religions, especially when you're born into, for example, if you were born into Muslim, you would probably also uh, follow the teachings uh, and it would be hard for you to change or like look for something else because that's how the world works. You no, this is not an excuse because I, I I will give you an example. I'm born no, into I am born. No, no. Like, you like see, I'm born into I'm born in a Christian family, but who said to you I did not think carefully and study carefully if it is good or not? Who said that to you? So I decide to stay as a Christian, or to be as a Christian because actually the Bible says you have to be reborn again, which means born of a Christian family does not make you a Christian. So I made a choice to be a Christian, and. As everybody, like now you are talking to me, you can convince me, you can make me change my mind. But can you? You cannot. Because simply, I'm very much convinced and I have all the evidence to prove to me that the Christianity is the right and the truth to follow. So I am not, it's not about I, it's hard for me to leave or to stay. Why it's hard? There's nothing is hard unless, you know, you are, a, you, you are a person who don't care. If you are a person who don't care, then you stay as you are. Why you go to school to learn? Nobody like to go and sit behind, be, you know, and there's a somebody school you and tell you what to do and give you a homework. And then he, he tell you what, 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 you know, you are a bad person if you did not do it. So I go to school because I want to, you know, uh, improve myself, improve my knowledge. You study because you want to improve your knowledge. And if the knowledge will not improve me, that means it's not a knowledge. But that's the reason why you're speaking here. That's a, that's the reason why we are having this conversation. That's the reason why I'm looking for the truth. But All I right. just, you see, that's the reason we are sitting here. But you know, um, but I, what I notice about you, yeah, that you are saying to me, the reason I'm here is to look for a truth. But the second I show you something, you say, I don't accept this. So it's not, you're not looking for a truth. Because if, no, you, no. if you are looking for a truth, listen, if you are looking for a truth, you check the truth. You don't say, I accept that and I reject that. This is your, your religion. This is your books. The second you know, start I, I, choosing your own, but like you, you are doing shopping. You, you are doing shopping. You are not making a study of religion to be sure it's right or not. So the second we show you something is embarrassing. I don't, you know, this is a... You know, I have an idea if it's contradict the Quran, but who said that this contradict the Quran? And so what? There's tons of things contradict the Quran. In fact, the hadith is exist to contradict the Quran. Because all the most of the abrogation of the, like if I say to you, what is the punishment of women she is married and she fornicate according to Islam? What is the punishment? I, I remember this debate. You know, no, this is not a debate. I'm just asking, my friend. It's not a, it's, I'm okay. not debating with you. I'm not debating with you. Listen, listen. I'm not debating with you. I'm trying to help you. Debate has to be with two people who have the same knowledge, you know, and even, uh, you know, there's a challenge. I'm not challenging you. I'm just trying to help you. So if if, if I want to, yeah, if I want to uh, uh, punish somebody now, she is married, 
or he is married, and they commit fornication. What is the punishment in the Quran? You cannot find it. Okay, what for we will do? Or for a huh? male. I didn't get your question. If a, man, if a man and a woman, they fornicate. What is the punishment? And they are married. It's, like, not, in the Quran. it's not in the Quran. It's not in the Quran. Okay, where we can fight yes. in the Hadith, correct? It's a Hadith, yes. Okay, but the fact, it was in the Quran. So yeah. it wasn't the Quran, the goat ate it, and now you ask the Muslim, they said to you, it's abrogated by recitation. Okay. <laughs> How in the world that can be? So the, so the hadith actually exposed the corruption of the Quran. And this is why many people, they try to escape from the hadith because the hadith give us a lot of secret out. So the hadith is like, a, you know, you go in the attic of somebody, uh, uh, like when you go in his room, he have pictures of uh, God's religion, he have Quran or Bible or etc. Then you have small storage room, dark room in the top of the ceiling and there nowhere hiding behind boxes. And then you open those boxes and then you find porn and then you find sex magazine and you find the Playboy. All of those are there. You don't show them. And this is how the hadith is for the Muslims. The hadith is the porn section, which they don't want to show unless it serves the purpose of what? Of lying to somebody. The second you show them something embarrassing, we don't want it. We don't accept it. We don't listen to it. Okay, so we, just uh, so we can continue uh, my main topic, what I was trying. Okay, All for right. example, you know, I told you I've been reading the Bible. There are some verses I would like you to explain to me. All right. But just before, I would like to ask, how would you explain? They are like Christians who also devote to Islam. It's also a Muslim. How the how Christians what? Yeah, they are Muslim uh, Christians who convert to Islam. Like who? So, this is like I have been following this as a Holy Speaker Congress where, where, where and there is a debate between Muslims and Christians. I see people writing on the my friend, those people do not know anything. You see, here we go, convert me to Islam. Those are not Christians. The Christians, they don't even know how to say the prayer, our Father, out of heaven. What kind of a Christian they are? Those are born in Europe, born in, you know, you call them a Christian. They are not Christians. I saw Same. every single, like those who open channels, like the guy, his name is Bob the Builder. Do you know him? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. This guy is a big scam. He claimed that he is a Christian. He do not know one single thing about Christianity. But he claimed to be was a Christian, he was Orthodox. But I never heard of an Orthodox, he don't know what Orthodox is about. So they are a scam to make money and collect money. That's all the whole idea. His but wife, she is from Senegal. Her. Look, listen, his wife, she is from Senegal, she is a Muslim, but we never saw her, we never met her, he never sat next to her. How we know that he is even telling that the truth that he have a wife. So they say things, they fabricate things. If I say I convert to Islam now, Christian prince, do you know how many millions will subscribe to me? And how much money I will make? We know the business. There's many people, they make a reaction for the Quran. It's just to click, for the click to make money. We know that, we're not stupid. Hmm. Muslims, they gang on any, or like somebody, he's, he's a Catholic, a Catholic react to the Quran. A Catholic, it's a big deal, he's a Catholic, come on. He's, a, he's the Pope. So they make video, that he, or he take a picture of himself, his mouth is open, like, whoa, like, what happened to you? His mouth is open like a tiger. But he's, he have a reaction video. I mean, come on. So we know that those are all fake. Otherwise, those who they claim to be Christians, I challenge to bring any of them to debate me right now. They will not dare, because simply they do not know anything about Christianity. And they don't know anything about Islam too. Like even this guy, Andrew Tate, uh, a little bit while he came in the in video, he says, brothers, sisters, and even he made the same for Sneeko. Why you are asking him to be a Muslim now? We know that they are not real Muslims. He said that we know they are not real Muslims. Now, can you say to me, Andrew Tate was a Christian? I don't follow him, but I'm just- No problem, uh, but is, can we say he's a Christian? Can we say his brother is a Christian? His brother, he claimed to be Orthodox, but he's a pimp. So my friend, the Lord, he says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who will do his will, those are not and never was Christians. But I can bring you people who used to be sheikhs and they left Islam. 
And if you can bring me someone who used to be a priest and he become Muslim, then I will say, okay, this guy was a Christian and now he become a Muslim. Let us debate him. Because yeah, he was a priest. I mean, obviously, he was not only just, he was religious. But then if he debate me, he will lose miserably because he will discover that he have no religion. I get your point, but what I'm trying to say, you cannot say for, for the sure that nobody in the world, like Christians, have uh, like they are ex-Christians. So that I'm telling you, if we just take... My friend, no problem with ex-Christian. Let us say, let us say, for the sake of argument. And, uh, we are 3 billion. 3 billion, 999999999 millions became Muslims. And there's only one person still a Christian, still Islam is false. And Christianity is true, because I can prove it. And nobody can prove me wrong. So if you cannot defeat the knowledgeable about both, that means you have no religion. You go after the ignorant. You see, I'm not debating you. I'm not defeating you. I know that your knowledge is not strong in Islam. So I said to you, bring me a sheikh. And then you watch what will happen. Did I tell you last time to call a sheikh? Did I or not? Yes, yes. Okay. No, Why I'm asking you to bring me a shake? Why I'm asking you to to bring me a shake? Because I want I want to show you that it's not your fault that you do not know. Even your shake do not know. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a shish kebab hummus. It's a mix of many stupid things. So your shake cannot debate me, cannot defend Islam, and he will fail miserably. Not only you. So. When you say to me, like somebody convert to Islam, I ask myself, who? Muhammad Ali Klai? This guy is a racist guy. He joined the Nation of Islam. He is a racist. He, is, he hate the white people. He decided he was looking for a group to join. A group that told him that Islam support black people. But the fact, Islam make fun of black people. So he's ignorant. He's a stupid. He joined it. And the rest is the same. They do not know what Islam is about. And they are seeking the benefit. The nation of Islam is created by Al-Qazafi. Millions of dollars come every month from Al-Qazafi. Every month. They have center everywhere. All from the money of Libya. Everybody knows. When Al-Qazafi, he died, the nation of Islam leader, this guy Farrakhan, who everybody know how big a scam he is. You know, he married women. All secretary, they have babies from him. Mashallah. Smash Allah. He boom, boom them. When he died, Al-Qazafi, he made a big speech and he went in the street and he went crazy because Al-Qazafi is the source of money. Now there's no more money. So we know how Islam function and we know the benefit. Even those who they are going in the street to free Palestine, they don't even know what they are going for. You can say all of them, they are Muslim too, even, they are, even though they are homosexual. How you can explain to me that a homosexual or a feminine group, they join Muslims, free Palestine, you can't explain it. Those Muslims, they want to kill the homosexual. So how the homosexual support them? Is that mean Islam is right? Or that's mean that those homosexual are a bunch of idiots they do not know that they are supporting the one who want to kill them most. So if you want to explain to me the stupidity, go ahead. But you cannot prove to me that if somebody, he's a stupid and he join you, he's a smart. Like you will see a Jew he is joining Free Palestine. Uh, free Palestine says Free Palestine from the sea, from the, from the river to the sea, which we kill all the Jews. But he's a Jew, so he's a Jew. He joined the one who screamed next to him, "Kill all the Jews!" Is that because he's smart or because he's a stupid Jew? Because he's a stupid Jew. If you bring me a Christian, he defend Islam. Is that because he's smart or because he's a donkey? Well, obviously he's a donkey. Because he is supporting the one who want to kill him and he want to go after him. So you are trying to present Islam to me as a good religion because there is somebody convert to Islam. But I can show you tons and thousands. Do you know how many thousands left Islam because of me? Do you have an idea? Not really. But <laughs> well, you can search right now, search on YouTube. Left after debating Christian Prince, you will find endless number. When the founder, the founder of Hamas, his son, he became a Christian. Is that because he's stupid? He do not know what Christianity, he do not know what Islam is. This guy, they call him the son of Hamas. This guy, he grew in the center of terror and he decided to become a Christian. Okay, we can come to it. Uh, so I have some uh, questions, sir, regarding 
some verses I've been reading also right. help me to understand. Uh, just a quick thing. Uh, you know, last time when we had, read, when we had a conversation, you told me there's no verse in the Quran where God telling about uh, Prophet Muhammad being unlettered. I have the verse, if you can just put it, 49, 48. 49? 49, 48. 29, chapter 29. Yes, chapter 29. And All right. Okay, okay, read it for me. Okay. All right. Uh, you, O Prophet, could not read any writing even before this revelation, mm. nor could you write at all. Otherwise, the people of falsehood would have been suspicious. Okay. Who, I, I want you to, to tell me, who is the one who told you that it says you cannot read? Who is the donkey he told you that? Where it says you cannot read? Uh, 